Hi, everyone. Yay. Welcome in. Welcome in. We got a great live today. I'm ecstatic. Courtney's ecstatic. Mary's ecstatic. Because, well, there's no echo to today. <laughs> but we have a great live. We're going to talk about planning and companion planting. I know it's beneficial. Uh, those little beezies and things coming around. We're going to talk a little about those, too. Um, first, I want to show you guys before we say... Um, I want to show it a video for six inches of soil. I like showing that every single time we do a live. Plus, it's super. And then we'll welcome everybody in, and we'll Mary's gonna, Mary's ready to go. So let me show everybody the six inches of soil video. I just think this is very important when we start a live. And here we go. Six inches of soil feeds eight billion people. We already grow enough of all the human essential nutrients to feed everyone who's alive. Farming is the single biggest cause of biodiversity collapse, the second biggest cause of climate change. Soil is the most valuable resource on the planet and we're degrading it without even realizing. We have come to believe that money is more important than soil. That idea has to change. Regenerative agriculture is farming, that we're producing food, but also farming in harmony with nature. You're working with nature, not against it. The more people see it, the more that they realise that it works. Having a regenerative agroecological system, that is surely the solution. Soils are absolutely phenomenal in the amount of carbon they can store. What we absolutely need now is urgent action from the government. Until you deal with nine retailers who have 94.5% of food sales in Britain, you're not going to have a level playing field. Consumers have a choice. They can decide to buy cheap meat from industrial farms, or they can find farmers that really value animal welfare and the environment that we're farming in. Dad started Regen Farming for the future generations to come, and that was the most selfless act he could have done. The people who are doing this are making big sacrifices. I think the potential is absolutely huge here. These farms really can change the world. It's all about the soil, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Six inches of soil coming up. I can't wait so to see it. I love showing that video because it's so important. To, it's a soil, you know, everything's about the soil. And uh, with Matt Powers, I'm learning so much right now in his classes. It's like just with seeds, getting seeds and how companies are washing all their seeds, they're putting all this stuff on it, and that they're not getting their true microbes on the seeds to generate what the plant's supposed to do. And that's, I thought that was pretty amazing. So who's in the chat, Courtney? Who's in the chat? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to chat it up, but my nails are too long, so I'm having a hard time typing. Sorry, guys. So, <laughs> but, um, thank you all for coming in tonight. Uh, we really appreciate it. And um, wow, you guys, we have hit 3,000 subscribers, which is really big for us. So thank you for believing in us and subscribing and uh, watching all of our content. You know, there's sometimes that me and Joe were like, man, uh, I don't know how many people are going to watch this. <laughs> but, you know, and um, really, it's awesome. It, it it blows our mind, like, every time. Like, we see the the numbers, and, you know, it's like, whoa. I'm like, I can't believe that many people watched that. Like, so it just gets even more exciting as we go along. So, um, we really appreciate that. But thank you guys for coming in. And I was really actually happy to see Uncle Alan here because I haven't seen him in a while and I was actually worried about you. So thank you for coming in. And um, we have Ginger Ninja, my number one fan. So thank you for being here. We have Purple Tea Bear, my husband, King Pooba. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate y'all. Prepper 101. Juju B. Juju B is here. Becoming a green stalker, which she knows everything about me. And I don't even know how, but she's... She's awesome. She can answer any hidden question. 
She's amazing. Mike's Kaya Gardening. Thank you for being here, guys. Really appreciate it. We have an amazing guest for you tonight. And we had some issues before <laughs> with StreamYard um, and stuff, not being able to hear her. And so we decided to do this again because... <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't go really good the first time because we just had technological errors. But um, yeah, we want to thank you guys for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. Also, Teresa uh, Koch is here. We haven't seen you in a long while. Welcome in. Uh, let me see. You got Jaden's here. How to Garden. Kathleen Moran. Kimbler Gaia. Prepper 101. Wanda Moses, Becoming a Green Stalker, that she said before, Glitter World, Janice Erfler, Erfler, Terry's here, Connie Davidson, Glitter World, and everybody's just keep on mounting on and these Garden Adventures. You know how hard it is to see this live, <laughs> see the names when you, I should have my glasses on. Oh my God. Well, welcome in everybody. Thank you guys so much for coming. So well, we're going to welcome our new guest right away. Sorry if I didn't mention your name, but wow. Well, we could be here 10 hours today. We got to move forward. <laughs> but welcome, and we appreciate every single one of you. So welcome, Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Welcome Hi. in, Mary. <laughs> Thank so, you for coming in and hanging out with us tonight. And you guys, we're so excited. We have so many things to cover. And I was talking to Joe, and I said, what about garden design? What about knowing what to plant where? I said, that's something that we need to talk about. I mean, people are starting to start their gardens here pretty soon or starting to you know, start their start. So I thought that would be um, a great topic to go over tonight and who better to go over it with than someone who knows her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I am super excited to be back. I'm super excited that we can all hear each other this time around. Um, and I've got a lot of great information. And then obviously as your followers and subscribers comment and have questions, I'm always happy to answer those questions as well. Also, we're going to, I'm going to get some seeds from Mary. I'm going to give those somewhere before, uh, somewhere in the middle of the chat and at the end of the chat. So it's going to be a quick process or I still got to get them from Mary, but also Mary's heirloom seeds, a new affiliate of ours. And if you hit that link, uh, this should be in the chat, and use the word grow big, not hashtag grow big. No. Nope. Use the word, no hashtag on this one. No, just hashtag. Use, <laughs> no hashtag. Just grow big. You get another 10% off. The information to this is pinned at the top of that page. You use that link, and that will automatically tell Mary that it came from us. And then you use that code to check out. When you use that code to check out, you'll get your little discount. And it'll work out and you'll love it. <laughs> it's, it's it's this time of year, it's what you need to look at. It's ah, just makes you happy. <laughs> I love seeds and I love talking about seeds. So when Joe asked me to come live again, I'm like, yes, absolutely. Um, I uh, I also have a, a class I'm doing uh in on the 20th locally. One of the um, nurseries asked me to discuss uh, seed starting basics. So if anybody wants to ask me about seeds, I will, I will talk your ear off. So I'm, I'm always happy to chat. But specifically now, January is the kind of time where people are talking about what am I going to plant? Where am I going to plant? How am I going to plant? And I get a lot of questions about specifically people asking me to plan out their gardens. And while I don't offer garden planning services, I'm always happy to give you some ideas on what to grow together, um, what to kind of plan ahead for. So uh, garden planning is, it now is the time. If it's cold, especially where you are, now's the time to sit down and figure out what you want to grow and where you want to grow it. Yes, yeah, so what's the first thing you do so it's okay like you said it's january all right you have your garden or maybe you never started a garden what's the first thing you want to do first thing you want to do in your garden planning is if you're just getting started um you want to find a space that is adequate for a garden so if you've never planted a garden 
You want a place that has a good amount of sun, a good amount of drainage, and you want to start with good soil. You showed the video of um, before the live chat, and soil health is super important. Um, I just started discussing getting my soil tested. And now, if you, especially if you don't have a bunch of snow on the ground, now's a great time to have your soil tested if you haven't already, because just dumping a bunch of fertilizer in your garden space isn't going to help if you don't know what your soil needs or where the soil health is at. Um, and then also understanding if it's an annual or a perennial and what you want to grow. <laughs> There's... There's plenty of people that, that jump off and say, I want to plant all these different things. But if you hate butternut squash, don't plant it. <laughs> plant something else. That's definitely something. I always try to try new varieties. But if it's something that you know that you don't like, skip it and plant something you really like instead. If I keep planting it, maybe I will like it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I plant. I keep on planting tomatoes. My wife's allergic. <laughs> oh my! Know, that's, a, that's a response I get too. <laughs> I yeah, don't like I, and I plant dozens and dozens and dozens every year. Well, I like the product. I just don't like to eat raw tomatoes. And I have a I have a friend that's the same way. She can eat raw tomatoes, but not cooked tomatoes. I think was her thing. So. She she keeps um she keeps growing them and saving them and storing them, but she doesn't really eat them uh, cooked. She only eats them raw as well. So it just it depends on on what you like. So one of the things that I use for planning my garden is companion planting, and so companion planting is a way of it's a it's nothing new. It's a very old way of planning certain varieties with others. So for example, um, borage, marigold, um, basil, and nasturtiums are all fantastic, very easy companion crops to pretty much grow with anything. You can, you can set aside a certain spot for them in your garden, or you can interplant them without within your garden. So um, I'm kind of old fashioned. I like to do it on paper. Uh, there are lots of free apps that you can use online. There's paid for apps that you can do online, but I really like to do it on paper. Um, and it helps me figure out what I want because you can get rid of stuff and put stuff back on and it doesn't have to be perfect. Right. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I prefer to use paper too. Um, for me, when I put things down in a computer thing, I feel like I've lost all creativity. When I write it down, I feel like I can be more creative. I don't know. I don't know if the other people feel that way or not, but that's just how I feel about things. Like I just feel like I can be more creative and more, I don't know, design ish versus using a computer program <laughs> you gotta find out if you're gonna do beds or is it gonna be like uh just planting in a in the yard so you know and along the line a 30 foot row you know how how many how many plants could you plant in each one right you know? it's my how, brain, my, how much right? sun <laughs> how much sun does each space take you know so in my comprehensive planting guide, I send it out in an email to every customer that signs up. Whether you just sign up for my emails or you actually place an order, I send out a comprehensive planting guide. Um, Joe, um, on my website, you can just search comprehensive and it pops up. And in there is a plant spacing guide for in-ground and raised beds. So you have an option for how far apart to plant them. And obviously you're going to have a little bit of wiggle room. You know, there it is right there, the updated planting guide. So you can have, you know, you can plant your tomatoes every foot in a square foot garden, or you can plant them 18, 24 inches apart, depending on what you're doing. So uh, the, there's every single one of those is a link. 
to an article that I've written or a tutorial I've written to help you grow a healthy garden. Um, so there are the in-ground and the uh, raised beds. This I use a square foot garden method as far as plant spacing goes. So uh, that's a really good good thing too to, to consider is where are you growing and how are you growing it? So um, I would say 90% of my gardens are raised beds. So f depending on what your, <laughs> what your issues might be, for me, we have gophers. Uh, we've got rabbits. We've got squirrels. We have yard and garden and forest chickens uh, that just roam the property. They're not mine. They belong next door, but they eat the bugs in my garden and I don't want them coming into my garden. So right. raised beds are a huge plus for me. I always have a rogue turkey that thinks like last year I had a turkey <laughs> lay about a dozen eggs in my lemon balm. She just thought she was the best turkey ever and i kind of let her do it because i didn't want to move her but at the same time she like i don't know if she just thought it smelled good and that's where she wanted to lay her eggs but um, yeah it was i don't like her in my garden that much because she'll eat my peas she'll eat carrots she'll eat them all and she'll dig them up right yeah, and and chickens in particular, I call garden destroyers. They will completely destroy your garden. So you don't just necessarily want them in there. Just one. Yeah, yeah, just one. <laughs> just I know. One. I, have a, I have a bunch, and they are completely away from my gardens because I definitely don't want them. You know, you plant this beautiful garden. You've got these little, you know, just starting to to grow beans, and then now tomorrow they're gone horrible <laughs> so one of the things that you were just go, go scrolling through was the um the comprehensive planting guide and like i said is the um uh the raised bed and all that information but another aspect of planning your garden is crop rotation so if you planted tomatoes in one area, you might consider tra uh, transitioning to something else. So since uh, tomatoes, for example, are a heavy feeder, you can plant, say, beans in that area uh, for the next year or the next season. And the cool thing about beans is they will naturally um, pull nitrogen from the air and it puts it down into the soil. You can you can turn over the bean plants when they're done and they will feed your soil um, and that way you aren't heavily um how you're not having to heavily fertilize different areas you can do it naturally using things like beans so uh, nice. crop rotation is another thing to consider when you are planning your next garden i don't think a lot of people do that they don't they don't either have the space or they don't think about it but crop rotation is really important and like, if you don't rotate your crops, like the next year, the bugs will be like horrendous yep. because they know exactly where to go. Especially if you um, planted that butternut squash in the exact same spot, <laughs> like, you might as well just sacrifice <laughs> your, yeah. your squash to the bugs. It's true. Well, that's the reason why you have your beneficial well not i call it beneficial now because all the bugs go to benefits <laughs> guys over there <laughs> so you, okay i'm good <laughs> I'm nice i want to plant a garden this year that is like plants on top of plants yes i just Intensive. want a soft pool i want my borage with my tomatoes and i want my basil with my tomatoes i just want the whole thing to look like a big stuffed full garden um, <laughs> I, I never have a perfect garden. I will say that there is, it, it, you, you see these people and they have these picture perfect gardens and everything's like in a row and everything's perfect. That's not me. I'm, I'm more like that. I, I will stuff the garden. I will overplant my beans. I will overplant my basil and I've got tree basil pretty much i've got basil coming out of my ears and i don't know what to do with it because i don't like this nature is messy 
Uh, so we that's part of the reason I love companion planting is it's growing with nature instead of fighting it. So Courtney, you mentioned all these, the bugs finding your squash when you plant it year after year in the same spot. The people that do that are the same people that are emailing me saying, I had to use, or they had to use things like seven and these horrible pesticides to yeah. kill the bugs because they have an infestation. But instead of doing all that, we use crop rotation, we use companion planting, and we use natural options to help save our gardens and our plants without having to use all those harmful chemicals. I was extra emotional one year when I had to use DE. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was and that's not even that bad. <laughs> I was conflicted because I didn't want to kill the bees. And so I was, I didn't know what to do. And I cried a little bit because <laughs> I told my husband thought I was crazy, but I did. I cried a little bit. I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm like, I don't want to kill the bees. <laughs> so Mary, anyway, have, Mary have, you, have you ever used surround? I haven't. It's amazing. <laughs> Last year was the first year I used it. And okay. Howie, uh, Food Forest Permaculture is his channel. He kept telling me, Courtney, get surround. It's a clay. He's like, get it for your garden. It's awesome. He's like, you can spray it anywhere. And I'm like, hmm. I'm like, and I looked around and I couldn't find it anywhere. Finally, I found it locally and I used it and we shook it up, put it in a garden sprayer and sprayed it. It did amazing. And it's all natural. It doesn't kill your plants. It just it the bugs smell it they don't like it because it tastes like dirt it doesn't yeah, taste like clay it's no, clay okay. yeah so i it was amazing and it saved my cucumbers it saved my squashes from being all eaten up the only thing is is like obviously with organic methods if it rains then you have to keep spraying it but right. oh, man, it was nice. <laughs> it was okay, nice. I'm gonna look it up then because I have never used it. I hadn't even heard of it before, so I'm definitely gonna check it out. Yeah, it, it's amazing stuff, and it really did. It saved my garden. It saved my cucumbers last year because <laughs> I had I had things like Harley Quinn bugs, stuff I don't normally get, and Harley Quinn bugs and stuff. And it was really funny because Joe sent me a bag of um, of uh, ladybugs a couple bags of them and I put them out there on my cucumber plants and stuff. And I just, I thought it was so funny because they were like instantly battling it out with the Harley <laughs> bugs, like email and stuff. I was like, this is awesome. I like need to video this and put it on my channel. It's like the battle of the bugs. It was really funny. <laughs> well, we got our good guys. We got our bad guys. Who's going to win? <laughs> yep. I, I watched a, a wolf spider eat a green, uh, some kind of green worm, not a horn worm, but something. And I was cheering him on because anytime you go out to your garden and you've got like your, your kale or your collards and there's just like, just the, the rib left of the, of the leaf and you just go, oh, you know? So yeah, when I saw the spiders are always welcome in my garden. I, I put them outside if they're in the house, but spiders are always welcome in my garden because they are fantastic at eating things that will eat your garden. Nice. Now, living in Texas, I see this in a lot of ch chats. Fire ants. Oh. Do you have a fire <laughs> ant problem? And if so you we, do them, have, yeah. we do have ants, but I have not had, I have not seen a major fire ant problem in my garden. Um, and Courtney was mentioning DE. That is one thing that I have tried for ants. Um, they laugh at me. So the DE doesn't really work. Um, but things like um, lemon oil, uh, boiling water, peppermint oil have really worked for me. Cinnamon. But I have not seen major issues of fire ants in my garden. On the property, yes, but not necessarily in my garden. Now with ants, the best thing I ever seen that I used was borax, a little sugar, mix it up. They go to the borax thinking it's sugar, and then all of a sudden they get back to the nest and everything explodes. Yeah, but not all ants are bad, right? Because but, I've had I've had bants, right. uh, ant, bants. Gosh, I can't even talk. 
I've had ants in my garden, which I've, I've observed, and they always go up and down my borage. And I think that they are, um, they call it aphid farming. Yep, exactly. That's what they so, are doing. So I don't know if that's, do I want to kill them? Like, ex I don't know. You know what I mean? No, broke farmer, you have a fantastic point. Ants are not necessarily bad. Um, they do aerate your soil. And for me, most of my gardens are in raised beds, so I don't have an issue. But outside of those where all of my fruit trees and my um, berry bushes, it's clay. Um, you might dig a hole to plant a tree and you've got this beautiful soil. You might go six inches further away and you have hard packed clay six inches down. So I don't necessarily like incinerate all of the ants that I see on my property, but they do uh, farm aphids. Aphids uh, give off like a honeydew from them. And so you'll see if you have a big ant infestation in your garden, specifically on your plants, always check the underside of your plant because chances are you've got an aphid infestation there, which is worse for your garden than the ants, really. So I should just let those ants do their thing? Uh, well, not necessarily, because they're, they're protecting those aphids, so because they're feeding on them. So I use them as um, what they call a canary in the coal mine. Like you, that's your indicator that you might have an aphid problem. And I do, aphids will suck the life from your plant. Um, and they'll spread quickly. So I always check if I do see a lot of ants on a plant, um, I'll check for aphids and I'll, I usually just give it a good hard blast of water and the aphids go away. Okay. How about slugs? <laughs> Feed them beer. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Um, slugs are so frustrating, but you just take a, a, it doesn't have to be good beer. Don't give them your your good stash. Just get them some cheap beer. Pour it in a um, in a tray, and chances are not only slugs, but um, pincher bugs. I don't know earwigs. They're they're called something different in different um, regions, but uh, the beer will definitely help. I don't use anything other than that on slugs, just because I don't have a big issue here. So Ted says, uh, you need ants for peonies. I said that okay. wrong, didn't you? No, so, that's right. Okay. Um, Probably just to spread the seeds, maybe. So this is, there are a variety of ants that take the nectar sec the secreted by the aphids, like we yep. milk, cows, uh, milk cows for milk. So everybody's talking about the ants. Yeah, I'm just trying to catch up. So another another beer and salt. Yep, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> um, another thing when you are planning your gardens is to understand annuals and perennials. Because if you are if you are looking to plant uh, annuals and you're going to be turning over that bed on a regular basis, you may not want to put perennials in that area uh and i've had i can't tell you how many people have have scolded me for putting things like lemon balm or mint spearmint in my garden beds because they're like oh it's invasive it's gonna spread all over you're gonna lose your whole garden and it's kind of so dramatic it's really not that bad because seriously if you plant something like lemon balm or spearmint they're awesome plants and the fact that they are perennials, an annual is something that produces one time or one year and it's done. A perennial can grow year after year. So short-term perennials are like artichoke, um, lupine, uh, just kind of self-seeds and people call it a, um, a perennial. But asparagus, depending on your region, can grow for 30 years or more. Nice. So you're going to need to plan ahead and make sure it's in an area that doesn't get a lot of uh, turning over every year. You definitely don't want to plant like tomatoes with your asparagus. 
Um, Ginger Ninja and Shawn Shawnee Shave said two good comments there. Slugs won't crawl over broken up eggshells either. And Biochar and Wood Ash, I think, keeps oh. slugs away too. I went crazy with the Biochar last year. And I was happy <laughs> I looked like a coal miner. <laughs> um, you know what else? You know what also worked for slugs is kelp meal. Oh, okay. Uh, I totally forgot about that because I definitely use kelp meal similar to eggshells. I've done that as well because having chickens, we have lots of eggshells. Um, so that's definitely something that you can use is um, crushed up eggshells or um, kelp meal. Okay. And I've, I've done that where I've, I've tossed out like um, we have fish fertilizer and fish bone meal. And after, after, treating different garden beds that were low in those type of nutrients. I smelled like a bait tank. It was disgusting. So <laughs> fish for I understand. Is nasty. <laughs> it is the smell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like fish smelling dog food. Like my, my dog is allergic to everything. So I have to give her like fish and potatoes. I tried right. to and then she had then she has to go right back to fish and potatoes and i'm like that is nasty her breath is this <laughs> i kind of had a feeling billy was going to do this uh right this he goes uh this works vaseline around a plant pot plant pot rims very anti slug repellent yeah i can imagine <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have like an herb garden that I've dedicated just for pre they're coming back because I know they are, um, but they are taking over. Like I have, I don't know what I was thinking. I, one year I, I thought pineapple mint was the bomb and I just wanted that everywhere. And um, it comes back and now it's just like taking over everything. I have to rip it out like every spring. I'm like, I just yeah. wanted little patch of it and now that i'm thinking of it it's not all that great i rather have had spearmint in there <laughs> like yeah you know. and and in that case it's best to plant it in a container if you want it contained and not spreading throughout your whole garden plant it in a container um i don't mind having unlimited amounts of lit off the top of my head is catnip spearmint and lemon balm because those are all uh, great for tea. Uh, I can feed it to my cats as well because lemon balm and catnip are great for cats. Spearmint is a delicious tea and it just keeps coming back every year. And I don't necessarily see it as a problem. But I'm right there with you on the pineapple. Uh, the pineapple mint, not my favorite. So it, you would definitely like now, like you said, you're having to pull it out instead of just enjoying having it everywhere in your garden. Yeah. So we're talking about companion, still talking about uh, companion plant, our nemesis, the vine borer, just the zucchinis yeah. and the squash. I saw one last year for the first time in my garden, and I was furious. <laughs> so Did you have a spare I have, day? <laughs> I have the benefit of having grown in three different states. So Florida was the worst uh, as far as squash vine borers the absolute worst california was almost non-existent i i never saw a squash vine borer now in texas it's hit or miss so there are several varieties of squash that are more resistant to squash vine borers so those would be seminal pumpkin tatume squash tromboncino squash off the top of my head, those are the three um, that are squash vine borer resistant. Now, I'm gonna try something new this year that I heard about and I've never tried before, and that is using turmeric powder around your plants. So I've never done it before. I'm just throwing that out there at you. It is just something that might work to deter squash vine borers. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm kind of excited about it. I'm. I'm not holding my breath. So we'll just see how it works and and see what works. Um, yeah. But specifically, um, nasturtiums are important for squash. Um, let's see. Uh, oregano is good for squash. 
and marigolds are good for squash. So those three are fantastic options um, specifically for squash. Nice. Mary, what was the three uh, squash again? When was the trum? Tromboncino. Okay, that, one, that one can be harvested as a zucchini. In that picture, it is more like a zucchini. Um, that's about 13 inches long at that point. And then if you let it grow even longer and you allow it to mature more, uh, the picture on the far right you'll see is a little more yellow. And that's where it's more like a winter squash. So you can actually store that similar to a butternut squash. Nice. Yeah. So I how like that because. What's that? How does it taste though? Is it good? It's it's similar to a zucchini in the in the younger stage, but similar to a uh, butternut squash in the winter stage. It's much firmer than a zucchini. So if you if you don't like that soggy kind of taste that it gets after you know you're cooking a zucchini, the tatume squash is the next one. Um, and again, very very similar in that stage. It's green. Um, and it, it is eaten like a summer squash, but if you allow it to grow a little more, it turns yellow, almost orange, like a pumpkin. Oh. And that, that outer shell is harder and it can be eaten now and stored as a winter squash. Nice. Yeah. And then the third one is called seminal pumpkin. It's a very, very old variety from, um, Florida. Uh, it, it's from the 1500s and beyond. Um, and that one is super hardy. It can grow up a tree uh, and it's it's a really good one. You'll find it under squash and pumpkins. Okay. And I did a, so I did a an experiment with seminal pumpkins. And if you are thinking about growing pumpkins and you have a problem with squash vine borers, I highly recommend this variety. Uh, I stored this pumpkin from October of 21 till November of 22 in a kitchen cabinet. So 13 months, I cut that thing open and it was delicious it was like i had harvested yesterday there it is interesting so it you'll see it in the green stage and then you see it in the yellow stage is that it, green stage it is not ready is it sweet or is it not sweet it's fairly sweet if i had to i would say it's similar to a sweet potato in texture oh okay so you can so it is Totally brown sugar and marshmallow it up if you really want. <laughs> I did. I literally just did um, olive oil, salt, pepper, and garlic. But if you, if for a more, um, for a more, you know, savory kind of sweet, you could definitely do brown sugar. Okay. It's exciting when you haven't seen a vet, uh, a seed before. I'm like, uh, or a plant before. I'm like, when I've never heard of this one before. It looks like an old vegetable. It looks yeah. like it does look like something from that era. Like I bet you, and during that time period, it was really something that could save people because it was you could store it for so long. So it probably so, helped people. To, to give you a little bit of the history, the um the Seminole tribe of Indians used to grow these and it would grow up a tree and they could store their food up in a tree instead of having it down. Uh, they would, like you said, you could store it for longer periods of time. So it's something that was a staple at that time because, you know, you're talking about the 1500s and, and earlier, you can't go to the grocery store and go, Oh, I'll just pick up a couple of squash and whatever, because these things could store so well, it really was a, a very important crop for them. That's awesome. Now, Mary, can you tell me something history. about this one here too? Just because I heard it was very, very good. Something that you should definitely grow. Yes. Now a lot of people don't know what a patty pan squash is. And it shocked me 
when I post pictures of it and, and I get people to go, I've never even seen this before. So uh, this is a type of patty pan squash that isn't your typical, um, it's not your typical perfectly round scallop squash. So patty pan is also called scallop squash. Um, I carry it in a yellow, a white, and a green tint. But this one here has a slightly different texture to it. It is custard. So it has a smoother, creamier texture than your normal patty pan squash. Okay. And it's another really old variety. That was somebody that was somebody from New Jersey. And I said, about lives 10 minutes from me. That's very popular on YouTube. That was this one of his top 10 vegetables. So if I say oh. New Jersey guy, you guys might kind of figure it out right away. And I found <laughs> that very interesting. That was one of his plants. It's a so. beautiful, it's beautiful. And they, they produce a lot. The great thing about patty pans, you can harvest them very, very small and they're edible or you can let them grow a little bigger and they're still edible. Hmm. And if you let them grow too big, you can scoop out the guts and stuff them with your favorite whatever and bake it and it's still edible. Nice. That's what I like about it. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of research on squash and stuff because I want another alternative to potatoes. And I, you know, I found all these cool things that you can do with them to make them taste similar to mashed potatoes. So that's what I've been kind of curious to do um, when I start growing them over the summer, because I definitely don't want to have that many potatoes in my life anymore. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried the Tennessee sweet potato squash? No, I haven't. So it doesn't necessarily taste like a sweet potato, but it does have the consistency of a sweet potato. Okay. So that might be something for you too. It's also winter squash. Um, if you harvest it too early, it can taste slightly bitter. Um, ask me how I know. Um, I ate, I, <laughs> but it's a really good one. And it, again, you can store it for a good six months uh, before you have any issues if you store it properly. So okay. something to consider. Cool. Okay, so companion plant, companion planting. Um, okay, so how would like so I just started off with my garden. I'm gonna be like a person that just started growing. Just started off my garden, and how would you suggest that I start? What what plants should you do you suggest I should start with, and how do I throw this together? Where should I put my tomatoes and my carrots and my onions and stuff like that? Great question. <laughs> so we did mention earlier, I mentioned earlier, to start with stuff that you like. Um, so I recently helped my mom. So this is perfect. My mom moved into a new place and she got all new garden beds. And she's like, what do I do? What do I plant? So I would have to say the absolute easiest crops to grow are going to be now argument, arguably, because squash is on my list. And some people say that they have trouble with it. So Probably the easiest crops to grow, especially for beginners, are going to be beans, uh, cucumber, squash, uh, beets. Uh, some of the more difficult root crops are carrots. And some people really have trouble with that. And they're just like, forget it. I'm not going to do it. And some people are like, oh, it was super easy and I never had an issue. Um, eggplants are super easy. And peas, um, whether it's a cow pea or a garden pea. So my suggestion would be, and I lump pumpkins in with squash. So I'm going to throw that out there too. So make a list of what you like, uh, specifically what you eat. If you're looking at uh, cutting some of your grocery bill, uh, what does your family eat a lot? Lettuce. Again, super easy. You don't have to have like uh, everything perfectly laid out. You can say plant a tomato in your square. So say for example, we're using a square foot garden. My, that tomato should be on the outer edges of your of your garden bed because it's going to be big. It's not, it's going to grow four feet, six feet tall. It's going to grow two feet out. So you may want to give that um, 
that tomato a little more than a square, but you don't have to waste the space around that tomato. You can interplant things like lettuce, radish, uh, borage, basil, and marigold. And all of those are gonna be beneficial to your tomato plant. And then you're not wasting space because you're adding a couple things in between in those areas. Um, something to consider too is the different types of marigold. And I brought those with me just so that I would remember. You have African marigold and French marigold. There's a huge difference between these two and it depends on what what kind of space you have. I learned the that in the first couple years. I was so <laughs> bad at myself. I planted those African ones. They were freaking huge. And yes. I was like, what is Exactly. So <laughs> if you are this? if you're short on space, don't plant the African cracker jack. Plant the French because the French gets nice and small and short and it's perfect for planting inside your garden. And I've had a couple of people say that exact same thing. Like, what kind of behemoth did you sell me? And it's, <laughs> it's because there are two distinct um, varieties and it's super important depending on what you're going for. The African Cracker Jack is perfect for the outside of your garden. Don't plant it inside. Uh, you want to attract pollinators to your garden, but you don't necessarily want to give up half of your raised bed to this one marigold plant yeah um and then like i mentioned earlier a couple easy companions are going to be uh borage basil marigold we talked about and nasturtiums and all of those can be interplanted within your garden they don't have necessarily have to have their own space i love planting my basil between each tomato plant i, pl I plant basil because i just want them bringing the beneficials Bringing those little wopsies going in round of tomatoes and uh, no more. Uh, what's that ugly looking green bug? Uh, oh, my God. I just had a brain fart. The ones that go eat the tomato plants. Oh, hornworms. Yeah, the ugly guy. <laughs> when you have basil, it seems like your tomato plants never get to hornworm. Yeah, and borage as well. Borage is another one that can deter tomato hornworms. It's super important in my garden. And... It is beneficial to your soil. Uh, last week I, I went live and I discussed flowers that can help improve your soil. And borage can be used as a chop, uh, chop and drop mulch. It can be used to add to your compost and it can be used as a liquid fertilizer. So if you is are- back every year, borage? It, it, self seeds very easily. Okay. So some people think that it's um, a perennial, but it's not, it just throws its seeds everywhere. And then you get free plants again the next year round. Okay, cool. I was curious about that. I'm like, do I need to buy more seeds this year? Um, for some reason, my borage last year, it got monstrous. I've never yeah. seen anything like it, but I planted it directly with my tomatoes. So I wonder if that had something to do with it. It was just the biggest I've ever seen. And it's really hairy. It's prickly. You can't just. And prickly. Yeah. yeah. I wear gloves when I pull it out because if you grab it with your hand, you've got all these little stickers all over your hand. I had one that grew four feet across in a four foot yeah. raised bed. Wow. So I was chopping that thing down and tossing it to the chickens, chopping it down and throwing it in the compost. So if you let it grow, grow big, it'll grow big. <laughs> it's good to grow big <laughs> <laughs> so, so since we're talking about um attracting pollinators to your garden i do want to share a little bit of information january is plant for pollinators month at mary's heirloom seeds and a lot of people have said well you know it, i got snow outside i don't know why you're talking about planting for pollinators and that's because in january a lot of us plan ahead and we're planning our gardens. So it's important to plan ahead for pollinators. There has been research done that says that including pollinators in your garden is more beneficial than adding more fertilizer as far as crop yields. So 
planting for pollinators is more beneficial not only for the planet but also for your wallet because it's cheaper than dumping fertilizer all the time and getting a so-so um a so-so crop yield yeah mary do you use compost tea yes i do um so since we didn't have a lot of compost well when we moved here we haven't been here that long um since i had to build my compost we purchased compost locally from an organic soil place um and i've made compost tea from that um but i also use worm tea as well well you need microbes in a garden for your healthy plants and going and growing organic so that's yeah that's what's important wow how about peppers for companion plant sorry doing i didn't want to burn stuff? my house down <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. Don't do that. Um, peppers need the same or or have the same companions as tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about peppers, we can talk about tomatoes as well. Um, generally, um, you can plant parsley, basil. You already mentioned um, marjoram, lovage, um, carrots. Be careful with carrots because. Carrots are a companion for them, but they can, um, uh, they take up too much root space. So I generally plant um, carrots away from my peppers. Dill is a companion for both tomatoes and peppers, but it also attracts tomato hornworms. So <laughs> you also don't want to plant your dill right next to your tomatoes or your peppers because you may lose them. Um, it's fantastic to um, encourage caterpillars that will turn into butterflies, um, but those are my sacrificial plants. So I tend to plant those outside of the garden beds and not inside. Um, I like to plant my peppers close together um, because they do better when they're planted close together and they can give each other a little bit of shade. Um, things like okra, it gets much taller and it can shade your peppers is good um but opposite for tomatoes because if you plant your tomatoes too close together then you can have things like powdery mildew develop so a little bit of a difference between the peppers and the tomatoes yeah i was always told that peppers like to hold hands yes yeah we definitely plant them closer together than say our tomatoes well, now you know why there's a hot pepper and a sweet pepper. <laughs> like the whole dance. <laughs> okay, that was stupid. <laughs> it was a little cheesy, but you're okay. <laughs> hey, it's almost Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, now, That's some really good information, and people are already really um, excited in the side chat. Um, they're already saying how informative that all this is so yay i always like to share helpful information for people and it's it a lot of my customers are just getting started but then at the same time i get emails that say that they've been a uh, gardener for decades and some little tidbit that i shared helps them so any any little bit i can help is is uh makes me happy now with with uh your soil every year when you start when you first came to your property did you soil test right away to see what you were planting in i did and not actually so a little bit of a backstory we moved here at the end of june in texas oh, which God. is hot like if you've never lived in texas in june july august uh yeah it's it was a completely new experience for me and i walked in and i go that's where i want my garden so we walked the property and i found the first garden that we started was a a flatter space it was more cleared and there weren't a lot of trees and i i actually tilled the soil i had never tilled before so that was like this whole thing has been a brand new experience as far as what works and what doesn't and i did that because i wanted to see what i was working with yeah. um so we tilled i bought a bunch of soil and i topped the whole area that i had tilled i'll tell you this i will never tell again because it just doesn't work for me <laughs> um but it allowed me to see what was there i made rows with the good soil um and i planted 
I want to say uh, 10 days after we moved to our property, I was planting seeds. Mm -hmm. um, about two weeks in, we had this beautiful rain and the water went from one side of my property right through my garden. <laughs> so oh. it's, it was a learning experience. And that's why that it out? <laughs> <laughs> so I had my rose going this way and the water went this way. So I just had a stream going through that part of the garden because it was a lower part of the garden. So I didn't, I didn't put in a permanent garden until the next year. That was my, let's see how it goes. But I mentioned how much I love patty pan squash. I planted patty pan squash seeds on July 1st after moving here June 20th. And I had patty pans that I was harvesting in 42 days. So wow. I, that is like a game changer for me, having moved to a new state, started a brand new garden and less than 60 days, I was already eating from the garden. So that yeah. will forever be a staple. Um, and then now we've learned how the property works and we've put raised beds in different areas of our property. We have a shade garden. We have a forest garden, which is where the chickens go. And there's garlic planted over there because the chickens haven't bothered my garlic at all. And then we have different, you know, everything's um, for seed saving purposes. We've got them with barriers and distance so that I can grow certain things and not have them uh, cross pollinate. Uh, and then the large garden is the area that the water flows through. And I've got raised beds that now go a different direction. So now the water flows through um, in the same direction that my raised beds are uh, placed so that the water flows through and I don't have flooding. Wow, yeah. what a learning experience that was. I yeah. mean, I would imagine. My first garden was a learning experience for me as well because I, I, I had one area of my garden that flooded. My backyard during this spring, gets like really wet and okay. one area that was just flooded and I had planted garlic and stuff in that area that, uh, that didn't work out very well. And so then we did the raised beds. And when we did that, then we kind of stopped that. It gets flooded like around them, like the pathways and stuff, but not in the beds. So I can right. still grow. But yeah, it, for the first year, my garden was not a very good successful one, but <laughs> it was it's fun. a learning experience everything that you some people would consider a failure i consider uh just an opportunity to learn because it's it's not like i'm going to stop gardening just because water went through i just worked around it <laughs> <laughs> now how many years have you lived at your property and what have have been your results when you did soil tests each year so we only moved here in 2021. So we have not been here that long. Um, and I recently soil tested and I won't go into too much detail because I'm doing a series on the benefits of soil testing and why. But uh, I recently sent out my soil to Texas A&M and I don't have my results back because I know that takes a lot longer. I purchased online uh a testing kit to test my own soil and then i purchased a kit that you put your soil in and you send it off to a service and they tell you what you're missing in your soil so i will say that even though some some sources say that the at-home testing isn't that accurate i found that the the test kit that i used was almost the same as the soil sample that i sent off Oh, wow. And and this is, I tested a brand new, for Christmas this year, I asked for another pile of soil. Um, every year with my husband has asked me what I want from the first year we were dating until still. And it still surprises him that I don't want jewelry or anything. And I'm like, do I, do I, I don't wear jewelry. I want soil or compost or, you know, I got a composter for our anniversary. And he's like, is there anything I can give you that doesn't de involve decaying matter? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I soil tested a brand new pile of soil and I found that it was um, higher, but not super high in um, the pH. It had very low nitrogen, but very high phosphorus and potassium. Nice. So I know now that when I take that soil pile and I add, and I fill the new raised beds that are sitting out there waiting for me, um, that I'm going to need to add more um, nitrogen to my soil in order to have a healthier soil. Um, and of course, I'm going to add my own homegrown compost that I've got going now. Um, but that's something that I know now because I've tested the soil um, that I'm going to have to to add. Yeah. Okay. I just believe soil testing is so important. I did one and it was important for me because I literally, we had filled our beds. I don't, we got, I can't afford the super soil that people buy. I don't even know how they can afford that. I don't know, but I just got whatever soil we had, we could get. I, we put it in there and nothing would grow, nothing. And I'm like, okay, so I just bought a cheapo Walmart testing kit. I tested it out and it literally said I had nothing nothing right. in there. And I was like, man. So we tried to fill it out the rest of the year. Uh, I can't remember why I grew, I grew peppers and stuff that year. Nothing, you know, it was doing horrible. I wasn't even getting peppers on my plants and stuff. It was just horrible. So um, at the end of the year, my husband just piled those with grass. I mean, just yeah piled them use compost accelerator we put ash in there put <laughs> all this stuff in there and then the following year we didn't plant anything in it but corn and sunflowers because okay. those the ones that were like high nitrogen you know suckers i guess you would say and so the following year we had we have the best soil that we have ever had <laughs> in those beds and it's beautiful it's like liquid gold right now <laughs> so but yeah for like two years it took us a very long time to get that soil where we wanted it because it was yeah. i had absolutely nothing in it i, <laughs> I can't believe that's what it did so go back to planting your garden <clears throat> what do you put in full sun and what do you put in partial shade and what could you part put in mostly shade so mostly shade is very tough on average even the partial shaded crops need four to six hours of sun of good sunlight um part of my garden this my shady garden is what i call dappled sunlight so it has some sunlight but it's not full sun all the time um, and that would be things like all the lettuces um radish and beets Beets really need a, a more like six hours, but they can adjust to four hours. They just take longer to produce. So if you've got an area that is a little more shadier than others, I would say plant lettuce like crazy because you lettuce is super easy to grow. And in areas where, you know, maybe it's cooler, lettuce is, is a great crop for cold weather. Pretty much everything else needs full sun, and you're talking about eight hours. Now, full full sun in Texas versus full sun in, say, Michigan might be completely different because, um, or New Jersey, depending on how your summers are. Um, it can get 110, 120 here, 120 with the heat index, um, and full sun is difficult. Uh, you might be losing your tomatoes at that point. So it really depends on when you say full sun, it's going to depend on where you are, um, where that works. But uh, there are some cucumbers, for example, that are more heat tolerant, but tomatoes, peppers, squash, eggplant, um, corn, beans, all of those love full sun and a good eight hours. That's interesting. Um, Ginger Ninja wants to know, what can you plant in a bed overflowing with little roly polies? Oh, so generally roly polies are there because you have decaying matter. So my suggestion to you, instead of, um, 
I would say remove the decaying matter from the top of your soil. That's usually why the roly polies are there. Roly polies are great. They are not a bad thing. They help break down decaying matter. So um, there isn't necessarily anything that they won't eat. It's because you have, say, dead leaves or um, something on top that is that is attracting them to it. What I've generally done if I have a lot of roly polies is I transplant into the raised bed. I don't plant seeds. So that might be something that you might consider is they will eat small seedlings because if you already have the decaying matter, they'll eat it. Um, so I would definitely plant some uh, transplant actual plants in there instead of trying seedlings. Yeah, and every time, I don't know if this works for Mary or anybody else, but anytime I plant seeds, I always buy an extra packet. I overplant if I plant seeds directly, especially like my peas, for instance. Um, last year or the year before, I planted a pound of peas because there's always something that eats this, eats it or goes in there and digs it up. I get crows. I get something. And then that way, if I overplant, I'm going to get something. <laughs> because right. like my turkey, for instance, will come in the garden and think that is her feast for the day. <laughs> um, and so I just overplant. So that might also help in your situation too, if you overplant a little bit and see, you know, you might have an excess, which is fine, but. Um, you may actually get something from your crop versus not having anything at all. <laughs> now, Ginger Ninja also said, I, I do transplant, but they take over. Can't get a whole strawberry because of those buggers. How about if you put some straw? I was just going to say mulch. Uh, mulch of some sort. Straw or even just the bagged. Um, wood chips type of thing that might help. I would I would suggest trying something like that. Um, if you aren't already mulching, try some straw. That might really help. So Mary, right now I'm going to do a quick giveaway. I'm just going to go. It's this going to be extremely fast. Might might take one minute. Winners, just email me that you won your and tell me tomato or pepper. I'm getting them right from Mary's site. I'm ordering them out, and I'll Ooh. probably you'll probably get them in two weeks. Yay. So. Let's do a quick giveaway, Give, get everybody off our faces for a couple seconds. <laughs> Here's a giveaway tool. Don't think you have to put it. Uh, oh, I love this giveaway tool. This thing is freaking awesome. I still <laughs> like to do challenging questions, guys, but this is awesome for like a quick giveaway. So, so. just put hashtag Marion. And we're going to do five winners now, maybe another five winners later. We'll figure it out. Maybe 10 winners later. <laughs> just hurry up and hashtag Mary. And uh, just tell me tomato or pepper. And that's all you need to do. And your address. So this is a little fun to do. I, I love giving away seeds. <laughs> Anything gets somebody grown. It gets grow something new. You know. Definitely. Love it. So if you buy seeds from Mary's Heirloom Seeds, use the word grow big and you'll get a 10% 10, 10 decrease in your order. And how awesome is that? I have growing in my food forest right now from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. <laughs> I planted a bunch of wild strawberries and they are all over the place. <laughs> nice. It's awesome. Okay, so we're going to go in like another 30 seconds to make sure we get everybody. There's 56 people in the chat. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Um, we still got some questions to go, so stay with us. There's 31. Okay, 10 more seconds, so get your hashtag Mary in. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Here we go, first winner. Jane Doe. Oh, yay. <laughs> Congratulations, Jane Congratulations. Doe. Congratulations. She's like our Second. secretary. She's awesome. I love her. <laughs> We've been really blessed with mods. 
Second winner, Salia. Congratulations. Uh, this is. Congratulations, Salia. And our third winner. David Gray. The next winner. I want to get these done as soon as we can so we get back to Mary. <laughs> it's pretty cool seeing the names in the chat. Becoming a Green Stalker. And a last winner for this time period. Wanda Moses. Awesome. So congratulations, guys. That was pretty awesome. And thank you, Mary. Last time Mary came on with us, she gave out so many seeds. Uh, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And, You're welcome. Uh, I love giving out seeds. Yeah, that was that was pretty special. So uh, one second. Sorry, guys. Oh, something happened to Courtney. Something happened to her connection. So we lost her. She's out in the space. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, going back to growing in the full sun, what is the best vegetables to plant in a full sun? Like the heat, the hot, the everything. Pe peppers. Hands peppers. down, peppers. They are, they thrive in the heat. Um, they can be drought tolerant. Uh, they are fantastic for heat. And sometimes stressing them out a little bit for hot peppers can actually help you produce some hotter peppers. Okay. And what is your favorite cherry tomato? Matt's wild cherry. Or, well, yes, Matt's wild cherry for a cherry tomato. But my hands down, my favorite small one is the yellow pear tomato. That's what we're giving out this month um, with orders for the plant for pollinators is the yellow pear tomato. It is sweet. It is juicy. It produces massive amounts of pear tomatoes and it's a really, it's an easy variety to grow. And how about your favorite um, grape tomato? Green grape. It's so pretty. It's just a teeny little green. It looks like a grape, but it's a tomato. <laughs> okay. How about the huge beef steak? What's your big, like the big beefsteak con you like to put on a sandwich, a slice, like a huge slicer? Uh, a zoichka. It is a yellow tomato. It is not super acidic. It has a mild sweetness to it, and it grows really well. That's pretty interesting. And it's works, a new one, too. I know. I'm going to look at it. I know exactly what it is, but I'm going to show everybody on the internet, too. Uh, what it looks like is, you know, a lot of people generally just go to the store, see what you have in your nursery and see, you know, not much there. A lot, of these, <laughs> a, a lot of the varieties I carry, the great thing about heirlooms is you can't necessarily get these in the grocery store. You're most places, you're not going to walk in and see a rainbow of tomatoes. You're going to see red tomatoes. You're going to see, you know, a little cherries, or you might get a specialty little package of multicolored cherry tomatoes. You're not going to get, you know, six different varieties of yellow tomato, for example. So Courtney's power went out. How about oh, that? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hopefully it comes back on soon, but that's a bummer. I didn't expect that. I, th I expected my power to go out, not, not right. Courtney's power to go out. Right. Wow, that's crazy. So I want to show well, everybody I, your, your uh, I, YouTube channel. I think I covered everything on my list today, too, already. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> Let me go to uh, the YouTube site and show everybody that. Um, so you can check out all her videos. So she has a lot of contests, too, that goes on during the year. I go and live like every Thursday. So if you, you know, you want to ask your questions kind of similar to us here, um, I do try to go live every Thursday. And then I'll have more of the soil 
um, the soil testing uh, videos loaded up as the results come in. So you see, you got your soil health, your pollinators. Well, how about that? Some of the same stuff we're talking about right now. There's my there's my soil pile. <laughs> wow, that's pretty funny. Um, heirloom bean production. Okay, so talking about your heirloom bean production, what is your favorite beans? The one pictured is royalty purple. That is my favorite. Um, as far as not production, but as far as look. Um, for production, my favorite is the jade bush bean because mm. it is more heat tolerant than most of the other beans that I've grown. Peppers, squash, and pest. This is so funny that we're talking about some of the same I exact <laughs> stuff on your videos. I know. It's very, I, I've discussed some of this before, which is why when you ask me to come on for companion planting, I'm like, yes, I will. I can talk to you about that all the time. <laughs> Garden challenges. Now, what garden challenges did you have last year? Last year, or uh, what you it was watermelon and pumpkin. Okay. And I haven't announced my garden challenges this year. I'm still on the fence on which ones I'm going to offer this year. Now we're going to have six contests on our channel. We're trying to figure out what contests they're going to be. So one is going to be like the watermelon radish. Okay. And if he is, if it splits, it doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> so, and he got away. So that should be pretty interesting. So we're trying to find out some contests where people don't cheat. Like if I grow a watermelon radish, there's only one watermelon radish. If I grew a Peter Pepper, there's only one Peter Pepper. Right. If I grew a pumpkin, there's so many variations where people could cheat. And if I grew, say, like a Big Max pumpkin... How many people have a scale for a, a huge Big Max pumpkin? Right. So what would some contest you think would be, not that well, not what you're doing, but something else, like say a sunflower challenge or anything I else? Like, you think? Well, the, so I like the sunflower actually, which is one I was considering was the tallest, you could do the tallest sunflower or the widest sunflower because, um, since you're grow big, um, you could do like how tall it is versus how big the head is. I've got a picture of a, a mammoth sunflower that I grew and it's, I'm five foot three and it was maybe almost not quite, but maybe twice the size of, of me or height wise. So, you know, that's a, that's a good one where you're, unless you go to like a sunflower farm, you're not really going to find a place that has sunflowers that tall unless you grow it yourself. The like guy's seen people do the width of it, but the heights, that's, that's pretty interesting. That's a lot of nitrogen. <laughs> Mine grew just from seeds that I tossed out. We were, we were packaging up seeds in the seed shop oh. and I dropped some on the ground. So I scooped them up and just tossed them out the door. And then I had this massive sunflower growing. It was great. And I fed my chickens forever. When I do, when we do these contests, we want to be different than everybody else. I don't want to see the same contest. Somebody, I want, I want everybody to enter all the contests. Sir. Sure. You know, I don't want, that's the one thing Courtney and I, what we're doing on our channel is trying to be different. What nice. other contests you think would be a little different? I'm not, I don't know. I've, I've been thinking about the, the contest for, for mine and I just am stumped at this point. Um, you could do like, some people have suggested doing, um, how many tomatoes you can grow, like, um, not just on a plant, but how many varieties or, yeah. you know, which you can't really fake that either because there's only so much you can buy at the grocery store. So you know, if somebody if somebody actually wanted to plant like 40 different varieties of tomatoes, they'd probably win. <laughs> Sounds like Mick. <laughs> Grow big. <laughs> um, let me see. I just had a couple other questions. Do you go to any um, conventions at all? I don't necessarily hear. Um, I have in the past. Uh, we went to like the Mother Earth News in Belton when I first moved here. Um, that was in 2022 in February. 
Um, I won't be going this year because I've got to go visit family instead. Um, I do, um, like I've been asked to speak at a Master Gardeners um, event that was last year in Longview, uh, which is about an hour from me here. Um, I'm teaching a seed starting class uh, at a local nursery, but like going to conventions like conferences and stuff, I don't do it a lot just because I don't always have somebody to run the farm here when I'm gone. So um, I just do what I can locally. Now, going back with teaching the kids, what's the, what's the, what makes their eyes like go up like and want to learn? Nasturtium seeds because they look like monkey brains, I tell them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I never heard of it, that. It, it works every time. I take a jar of, of nasturtium seeds and I tell them what they are and I tell them that, I, I mean, they look like a brain. Um, but you know, kids, you call them monkey brains and I talk about poop and they think that's hilarious as well. So, um, just, I love teaching kids because they are so excited to learn and they get their hands dirty. And, um, one of the schools that I used to do regularly, um, in California, they had their own massive garden and they were eating from that garden. And, uh, it was you know, talking about pollinators, they had just learned that the lemur was also a pollinator. So they told me all about lemurs. So it just, it's nice to, to get them more involved. Okay. Now, when you started, um, I know I'm jumping around a little bit here. Now, when you started your garden, how much did you, like people who don't have space, you know, so they got to figure out where to plan everything. What's if you had a small space, say you had two, uh, two eight by eight spaces to plant, what would you recommend something easy for them to grow in them? I know we have to say, hey, plant what you're going to eat. Right. But um, what is, what's something? I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of planting lots of different things. So in some of my bed, in some of my beds, I don't just plant tomatoes here and just plant peppers there. I like to do a little bit of everything. So if I only had two spaces, two garden beds, um, the, the easiest stuff for me that I love is going to be beans because you can get multiple crops for a year, uh, for the season, um, tomatoes, peppers, radish, and chives because chives are super easy to, to plant in between certain things. Um, and you get a really good harvest from some of those. You can, you can collect a little bit and then Swiss chard. Uh, as much as I love lettuce, I love Swiss chard more because it produces for a longer period of time and then you get more bang for your buck. You plant one Swiss chard seed and that plant, depending on your region, can grow for more than a year. So, and you can cut it on the outside and it just keeps coming back. So I like things that are going to be going to give me more bang for my buck and Swiss chard really just tops the list on that one. Now planting asparagus is great in New Jersey. How does it grow in the heat of Texas? Uh, mine are growing great right now. I, I haven't had a harvest yet because um, from seed it takes three years to even start to give you anything. So um, it's it's growing. And then once at the end of the season, you chop it all back and you let it kind of go dormant and then it'll start picking back up. Um, but everything's, everything that I planted so far is surviving. I've got the green and the purple growing. Now, I absolutely love asparagus. I never liked it from the store. I never liked it. Then all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm going to grow it. I've got to show it. I'm going to grow it. And it's like, now I just eat it right out of the garden. It's like so soft and tender. You know, yeah. you buy it in the store, there's nothing. It's terrible. Yeah. It's like having a grocery tomato. It's terrible. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and so what, um, so what do you have planned for the next month? Like, what are you doing? What's your plans for the next month for yourself? Um, well, it's cold. We are going to be at nine degrees as our low next week, um, one of the days, which for me is cold. 
Um, I grew up in Southern California, so nine degrees is not something I'm used to. Um, right now is the busy season for Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Um, as soon as we get off here, I'm going to get back to processing orders, actually, even though it's, it's almost 730 here. So um, I have a lot on my plate as far as orders go. Uh, and then as far as me personally, I'm just planning my garden now. Really, we've got plant for pollinators month in January. Um, and then February, I will be finishing up filling my raised beds. And then in March, we get to plant out in the garden. Okay, if anybody has any questions, uh, put them in a chat and uh, and then let's get Mary to work. <laughs> I know, I gotta get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> so Kathleen says, how did Mary get started? Did she grow up gardening? Um, so I didn't come from a farming family, but I do have some heavy influence in the garden. Um, my granny had the most wonderful, fantastic, tomatoes you've ever tasted um, on my dad's side. And we did help her with her garden a lot. Um, and then I had a grandmother on my other side who had a full blown farm, um, cows, pigs, sheep, chickens, and a full garden. So I did have gardening in, you know, growing up, uh, but I didn't actually start my own garden until I started learning about all the garbage that was being um, added to our foods, um, and then also like the herbicides and the pesticides that are used in conventional farming. So when I started looking at that, I was like, I got to start growing some of my own stuff. And that was a, quite a few years back. <laughs> I started Mary's Heirloom Seeds in 2011 and I was growing my food well before then. I love that. you. Now, what's the biggest issue you ever had that you really had to keep on researching, how to figure it out. Like what was the biggest issue you ever had gardening? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say um, something that I had to figure it out, um, but the, the most difficult um, issue I've had to deal with was gophers. Um, mm. In our last property, the entire back acre was gophers and wow. everything had to be in raised beds. And the first time I put raised beds down, I just used regular chicken wire and that didn't work. Actually, the first time I did it, I just used the regular landscaping cloth and that didn't work either. Um, I literally watched a radish shake and then sh down underneath the soil, just like a cartoon. Um, oh, so no. I've, I've learned over the years um, that if you do have underground pests like that, oftentimes raised beds with um, hardware cloth or something similar are going to be your best bet. It took me a lot to learn to just go with it. It's more expensive than doing raised bed or than doing in ground, but at least you actually have something. <laughs> yeah, that's so rough. I, I had so many plants eaten by gophers. It's like, Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Rukasari Project goes, what are two edible plants you need to grow? You do not have, oh, that you don't have, but you have a desire to own. Uh, I don't have any actually. Uh, <laughs> I, I grow almost every variety that we have at Mary's heirloom seeds. So I don't, um, I don't ha necessarily have anything. I will say that asparagus for me right now is what I really want, but because it takes so much time, it's growing, but I can't eat it yet. So if I had to, if I had to pick one, um, uh, <laughs> Mary grows what she wants. Um, if I had to pick one, I would say asparagus because it's growing, but it's time consuming. I won't be able to actually eat it until next year. Okay, so Mary, thank you so much for coming on. I'm gonna let, let you go. Thanks for having me. Um, wow, we, we really appreciate you helping us, uh, you know, helping our channel out, coming on live, answering people's sure. questions. So one thing I will say, if if anybody watching this, whether it's now or the replay, and you have a question that I didn't answer, you can send me an email to mary at mary's heirloom seeds .com, and I actually answer my own email. So if you missed it. Just send me an email and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. We do. We do have one other question. 
There we go. I missed this. Do you grow squash vertical, vertically? I only grow um, what naturally grows vertically. We talked about tromboncino squash earlier. That is my favorite to grow vertically. But as far as the bush squash, I don't um, like some people will train it up to grow vertically. I don't um, mostly because I have the space. Um, if I didn't, I might try it. But the tromboncino squash, if you want to grow something good that is um, pest tolerant, try the tromboncino squash. You won't regret it. Awesome. Okay, Mary, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk very soon. That was awesome. Thanks Thank for having for me. I'll, I'll sign off now. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. Well, that was great, wasn't it? <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Um, hopefully, Corky Qu Qu gets her power back on. That's pretty nuts. Um, let me see. So we're going to go back to the wheel. So stay with me for a second. Our next live is Thursday, and we're going to do Brussels sprouts. Uh, you got to hear the wind right now. The wind is really going wicked. Um, it's probably about 40, 50 miles an hour right now, which is pretty crazy. And it's supposed to go up to 50 or 60, maybe even higher. <laughs> Our house is, it's, you know what? I won't fly away, guys. I won't fly away. <laughs> Billy, I'm okay. <laughs> the roof will fly before I fly. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so Thursday's live, 7 o'clock. And uh, there might be the next week after. Hold on a second. This Thursday, it might be 8 o'clock. Just look for the live. The reason why my son has senior uh, high school orientation. So to take the eighth graders to the high school and do an orientation. I have no idea how long that's going to take. So uh, Thursday is going to be 7 or 8. I just got to confirm it with my wife. Um, so look forward to that, but Brussels sprouts guys, Brussels sprouts. I think that's a pretty cool growing guy to go over. We're also going to give away, I have the seeds here. So we have two affiliates. We got Mary's heirloom seeds for South and up North we have M.I. Gartner. So the seeds we're going to give out is the Big Max pumpkin, Crenshaw melon, Rocky Ford cantaloupe. Lucky Tiger tomato. Look at the color on that. Jamaican yellow mushroom pepper. And Corky will go over all these, uh, the seeds in the back of the seeds, PC packets, and a tropical sunset tomato. So we're going to give those away on Thursday, and plus some other seeds from Baker's Creek. Let me put that to the side. So right now we're going to, oh, if I if you haven't received something in it, mail, like hot sauce or something, let me know so I can make it right. Uh, there was some times where I couldn't get stuff out in time and kind of got lost. So if you have not received anything in the mail that I was supposed to give you, please email me. Okay, so let's go to our uh, giveaway tool again. This is for Mary's heirloom seeds. Put in, let me go backwards here. Let me find where the tool is. There it is, the giveaway page. I'm going to put Corky. So just put, court. no, you don't have to put the hashtag, just put Quirky in. Oh, I see Polka, that's funny. Nope, it's going to be Quirky. So put that in. You're going to tell me a uh, tomato or pepper from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Now I got to get those from Mary, so I got to order them from over there. So, and just tell me, and I'll try to get these out and, as soon as I get them back. Um, now... If you go to Mary's site, which um, you put, uh, don't put the word hashtag. It's only for MI Gardener seeds. Uh, for Mary's heirloom seeds, you just put grow big, no hashtag. 
And my gardener, hashtag grow big. Mary's heirloom seeds, grow big. So it's nice and simple. You get 10% off your order. Uh, Mary, uh, uh, and my gardener is, if you spend 18, you get free shipping. Mary's heirloom seeds, it's 20, you get free shipping. So thank you guys, everybody, for coming. So we're giving away some seeds, which is really cool. There you go. So we got 38 people this time around. Awesome. So let's give away some seeds. Here's the first straw. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. Kathleen Moran, congratulations. Kathleen Moran. And Kathleen, be safe out there. I know it's starting to get windy. Okay, next winner, next winner. These are from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Teresa Koch. Congratulations, Teresa. It's good to see you again. So Teresa is in his channel. Uh, oh, my God. I just forgot uh, the name of it. Anyway, I'm giving free seeds over there on Facebook. Oh, my God. I just totally went blank. Teresa, can you tell everybody to cite on Facebook for uh, seed giveaways and seeds and everything? Can you share that for us? I appreciate that. But I'm giving packs of seeds away every two weeks over there on that site on Facebook. So, Teresa, if you could post that, that'd be awesome. Okay. There we go. Becoming a green stalker. Congratulations. So, congratulations to becoming a green stalker. Terry, congratulations to Terry. Let's do the last draw here. No way, that's a double winner too. Congratulations to Salia. Wanna wait love. Congratulations. Okay, guys, now we know what we're going to do. We're, we're going to give away some Baker's Creek seeds. Let's see what I grab out of the bag. I get to see my beautiful face again. Oof. So welcome in our Georgia a suburban homestead. There's Christy Baum. Welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, let me see what I can give away. Get some flowers here. See what I have most abundantly from Baker's Creek. Hmm, what should I give away? I got a lot of dandelions. These are pretty cool. Let's you know what? Give us let's give away some bachelor buttons. So some we're gonna give away some bachelor buttons quick. Pretty cool, right? And I'll probably give you a couple. Of other packs of seeds from another company too. Wow, that wind's blowing. If I do go out, guys, it's because well, it's over. <laughs> so we're gonna give those two, uh, two away. So uh, let me see if you guys can remember. Well, everybody can remember fireworks. And the other one is this. So romantic and fireworks. 
Okay, let's see what the winner is going to be for these. Thank you guys for all staying around. We do this every Tuesday and Thursday. And for Grow Big T, for my Sunday fun day, we're going to be here for the rest of the month. And hopefully we're going to be monetized by the end of the month. And then Corky goes, I had to walk the dog and it was really bad. Yeah, it must be really dark too. Oof. So I'm watching on my phone. Okay, let's do a couple of these quick. That was so awesome live with Maris Heirloom Seeds, guys. That was really awesome. I'm so happy she came on. And it's so funny looking at her site, just seeing exactly what we talked about today is exactly what she talked about in uh, today's live. So hashtag... Planning. So, no hashtag, my mistake. Planning. So, Quirky goes, candles and flashlights and fire going. So, hopefully you get your power back. Um, I'll give it another two hours, I think, and we're going to be out over here. I mean, that one is really wick wicked right now. No Uber for me tonight. <laughs> You'll be crazy opening that door and letting somebody in your car with the wind going like that. You'll be nuts. Welcome to Casings 55. Welcome in. And Tammy, uh, welcome into this into our um, our YouTube page. It's good to see you. Inner skill. Give it a couple more seconds. So we'll do five winners. Somewhere's around there. Thank you guys all for coming today. We appreciate you. Again. For Mary's Heirloom Seeds, go to the site and use the word "grow big" when you aren't when you're checking out, and you'll get ten percent out, and that helps uh, Corky and I out tremendously. So, between Mary's and Heirloom Mary's Heirloom Seeds down south, and my gardener up north, we got the whole United States because either east or west is fine. You're just going uh, vertical. Okay, here we go. First winner. Sandra, living a full life. Welcome to the channel. So, Sandra, my email is gardenstategardener at yahoo.com. Gardenstategardener at yahoo.com. And make sure you uh, make sure when you message me, you give me your address and exactly what you want. That's very important. Have your every single time you win, guys. If you email, if you win twenty times, you email me twenty times your address, because when I look at your email, I'm writing down your address. I don't want to be looking for it. So if I can find it right away, that's what I want. So congratulations, Sandra, living a full life. Next winner. That is awesome. It's nice to see new people on the site. Helena, we got a second new winner tonight. This is awesome. Helena M. Now, the people with the Baker's Creek, you're getting these seeds today. Um, well, tomorrow morning, I'm mailing them out. So, congratulations to Helena. Again, if you don't message me, I can't, e I'm not emailing them out. So, you got to message me. Third winner. Yeah, email me two times. Whatever you can do that I know that you won two times, becoming a green stalker. That's amazing. That's love that. I love that so much. Uh, 
Um, congratulations to becoming a great stalker. You're our third winner. Happy Mac. Congratulations to Happy Mac. The last winner for Baker's Creek Seeds. Welcome to Scotty Too Hottie. Welcome in, Scotty. I didn't see you before. Suzanne Goulet. So that's our winners for today, which is pretty awesome. Um, again, Thursday will be 7 or 8 o'clock. I just got to confirm it with my wife. Brussels sprouts. What do you, Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts from A to Z. So there's a lot to go over. And uh, we're going to go over seed packets. I, got you, I showed you the seed packets. We're going to give away and my gardener seeds. We have a health a health uh, episode from Dr. Paula Ruffin and a Did You Know segment from J -J -J Juby. And uh, thank you, Jane, for being an awesome mod and showcasing the channels and giving us every, all the information where you could buy seeds and emails and everything else and sharing channels out. We appreciate it. What is your email? It's uh, right over here. Garden State Gardener at yahoo.com. So for those that are new here, welcome in and hope hopefully we can see you every single uh, week. And uh, we try to do the best we can. And we are really expanding really fast. Um, we need 1,000 hours to be partially monetized. And, uh, and that's in a month. And oh, David Gray is a big Indiana fan, as you guys can see right here. Where is there? It is Indiana. That's from David Gray, and it's fifty. Oh my God! Look at that, fifty-three, forty Rutgers. Oh my God! For some reason, Rutgers has Indiana's number, which is really amazing because Rutgers couldn't show the layup basically the whole year. <laughs> Bet you they didn't miss one tonight. Anyway, that was a lot of fun. And uh, we got a lot of great guests coming on in the future. Some people, like, you're going to be like, how did you get them? Well, I have no idea. <laughs> they seen, uh, you know, like a sweet pepper and hot pepper get together or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, we appreciate you guys. And... Uh, that's enough of me. I hope you guys have a great week. Be safe out there. It's crazy weather, and it's probably some crazy weather um, for the rest of the winter. So please be safe, and uh, take care, everyone. God bless.